Welcome back to Cooking with Nam. Today's recipe is Cucurbita Fricta or Fried Gourd. We are pairing this with Aliatum Exquio Glande Aut Amygdala or Garlic Sauce with Walnut or Almonds. This comes from De Honesta Voluptate et Valudutine, An Honorable Pleasure and Health by Bartolomeus Platina. If my pronunciation is a little off, blame it on my high school Latin courses. Links to the original text in Latin will be in the description below for the adventurous, as well as modern translations of the recipes with the measurements we used. To better facilitate an international community, all modern transcriptions of the recipes are in metric, not imperial. So we're using weights like grams and not cup measurements like are popular in America. There are plenty of conversion charts and programs online to assist with this if you do not have a kitchen scale. Now, what do we need to cook this dish? We are using a bottle gourd. We also need salt, flour, breadcrumbs, verjuice, and fennel blossoms for the main dish. For the sauce, we are using almonds, garlic, breadcrumbs, and beef broth. The first ingredient I mentioned was a bottle gourd. Most Asian shops have these available. If not in the shops, then you can order them from an Asian grocer online like we did. The reason I ordered this type of gourd was because I tried to be as accurate as possible in recreating this recipe. There is a bit of a hubbub in the reenacting world about the mention of pumpkins in medieval cookbooks. Pumpkins as we know them, the orange ones that are carved for Halloween and used to make pumpkin pie and pumpkin bread, were not known in medieval Europe. They are definitely a new world export. There were plenty of other gourds available in Europe, Asia, and Africa though. Just a little bit of research showed that the pumpkins, probably used by Platina and his contemporaries, were actually the North African bottle gourd. I've read a few recreation recipes that use orange pumpkins, specifically Haikato pumpkins. This is a completely different flavor and not a good substitute. The bottle gourd is actually very similar in taste to a zucchini, so if it is a headache to procure some of these, a zucchini will be a very good substitute. The first thing we do is peel the skin. Then slice the flesh of the gourd into thin strips. The recipe does not call for cutting the strips smaller, but we cut them in half simply to have them fit into the pot and pan easier. They are also not quite as floppy when they're shorter. Yes, my cutting skills are probably not optimal, but it's usually my sous chef who cuts everything when we cook at home. Unfortunately, he's running the camera, so I don't have his services at this moment. <laughs> Pop the strips into a pot of water and bring to a slight boil. I know a wash pot never boils, but I'm watching you. <laughs> a filmed pot never boils. Yeah. The moment the water is boiling, remove the strips and transfer them to a cloth and let them dry a little. After they have dried, we roll them in a mixture of flour and salt, a little bit of salt to flavor, then whisk it up nice and finely so it's well mixed. The recipe specifically calls for white flour, so not something heartier like a whole grain or rye. While we tend to extol the health benefits of whole grain flours and breads today, historically white breads and flour were desired as they were seen as more pure. Also the process was far more expensive and the wealthy saw it as another way to separate themselves from the poor who had to subsist on whole grains. So with our elite white flour, roll the strips of gourd. Take the coated strips and fry them gently in some oil. Not much or they will become too soggy. Granted, the white flour we have today would not be exactly the same as what they had back then. They did still have more grit and a lot of times the white flour we have today is also bleached, which they would not have done. But this is the closest approximation that we can get. Before we move on to the garlic sauce, Platina mentions topping the gourds with white breadcrumbs soaked in verjuice. Platina specifically states white breadcrumbs, just as before he stated white flour. 
So again, while we tend to associate medieval society with more rustic breads, like artisanal breads today, he is specifying white. So we are going to use a white roll and break it up. The crumbs do not need to soak for long. It is very useful if we break up the breadcrumbs finely so that they're in smaller pieces and it will soak up the juices much easier. The garlic sauce needs white breadcrumbs soaked in meat or fish broth. Beef broth is handy for this task. Our beef broth is made from beef bouillon and water. You can use whatever beef broth you normally have on hand. So if you make your own stock or you buy it pre-made, the end result is pretty much the same. So we have a nice beef broth in here. Let them soak for a few minutes so that they are nice and soggy and full of beef broth flavoring. Now onto the garlic sauce. We used almonds in this recipe. Walnuts are perfectly fine too, as the recipe states to use either. Note we are using a mortar and pestle here. I will often cheat and use a food processor and lightly grind the ingredients. Unfortunately, our food processor recently died, so we are going the old fashioned route. Either method is perfectly acceptable. Coarsely grind the almonds and add as much cleaned garlic as you desire. Personally, the Italian blood flows strongly in my veins and I love garlic, so we are using a whole bulb. Cut up the garlic finely to make the next step easier. Take the minced garlic and ground almonds and grind them together so they blend well. Platina states to sprinkle them while grinding so they do not make oil. We figured that means with some water to keep them moist. After the mixture is ground together, Put in the white breadcrumbs which have been softened in the meat or fish broth and grind it together again. If the sauce seems too stiff, Platina suggests soaking the mixture in more broth. I suspect ours is fine as is. You can never have too much garlic. Besides, it helps keep the vampires away and most everybody else. <laughs> Coming back to those breadcrumbs soaking in verjuice, they need to be relatively soft, which these are. If you need to, you can press the soaked breadcrumbs through a strainer to thin them out more. I'm rather happy with the consistency we currently have. Verjus is from pressed, unripened grapes, not alcohol, so not wine. Verjus is not so common today as an ingredient in America or Europe. It seems to be making a comeback in South African cuisine. It has been a massive pain trying to find verjuice in the grocery stores. We even crossed the border from Germany to France since I read verjuice is popular in some French cooking. I searched the major grocery chains but never found verjuice. Even armed with a French wiki article about the ingredient, the staff at the stores were clueless and we generally ended up in the oil and vinegar aisle, which it's not. You can search some specialty shops or order online, which we eventually broke down and did. Otherwise, if it is too much of a headache to find ver juice, you can substitute with some regular grape juice. The flavor will not be exactly the same. We took a sip of the ver juice when we first opened it. It really is made from sour grapes. It does not taste like vinegar or wine, but like a very sour grape juice. Still, regular grape juice should be close enough. Now to top the fried gourds. We cover them with some garlic sauce and some of the breadcrumbs soaked in verjuice. And also with some of the fennel leaves. And now we have our corcorbita fricta or fried gourd. Let's dig in. Mmm. Really tangy, really sharp on the garlic, but that's awesome. Oh, Franciscas, you need to come and try. Yes, of course. Mmm, -hmm. mm, very good. Not too heavy on the garlic? Never too heavy on the garlic. Never too heavy. No. Are we going to be visited by any vampires anytime soon? No chance. No, probably not. How else do you think this tastes? Like, what other flavors can you notice in this? 
Do you taste the... The um, verjuice. Definitely can, the verjuice. Yeah, you can taste the verjuice. Mmm, some more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you taste the fennel? A little mm. bit when you have it on top? A little bit. Okay. Is this a winner? Absolutely a winner. We are eager to hear from our viewers who have tried this recipe. Let us know how it came out for you and if you did anything differently. Did you attempt to find Verjuice and what was your adventure? Leave us a message in the comments below and be sure to check out our other clips available such as our comedy skits. Also, we're preparing some educational clips for the future, so get those thinking caps on. If you are interested in knowing when we have new videos out, go ahead and click the subscribe button. And if you like the video, please show us with a like.